everybody, Jem Schofield here with Able Cine, and today we're going to be talking about this, the URX P03D. It's a dual channel receiver from Sony. I'm excited to talk about it, so let's get started. So why am I so excited about the URX P03D? Well, I've been using Sony's UWPD series for quite some time. In fact, right now I'm using their single channel transmitter and receiver for this video and I use it a lot in small to no crew production, but I do find myself in situations where I'm looking for a dual channel receiver so that I can have just that one receiver on my camera system and I can feed two inputs to it. There's many situations in the type of work that I do and a lot of people do in small to no crew production where they wanna mic up not just one but two people and that could be for a small narrative, that could be for documentary reasons, that could be for corporate in-house production. And so having the ability to have two wireless mics feed into this receiver and also the ability to feed in a wired mic for a third option that can be mixed into that give you a lot of options with this device. So let's talk about how we use this unit in the real world in practical application. So the first thing I think I should talk about is the MI shoe or multi-interface shoe that is on many of Sony's camera systems. You have it on their A7 series, it's on the FS5, the FS7 series, and what it allows you to do is allows you to pass data into the camera system without the need for additional cables. But you do need to make sure that you have the right adapter in order to pass that data into the camera system. So what we have here is the SMAD P3D. This is their dual channel version of their receiver for the MI shoe. So all you do is you just take this MAD P3D and you put it onto any Sony camera that has this multi-interface shoe. And then you're using the dual channel receiver here without your normal cold shoe attachment. So there's a special port right here that is designed to match up with the SMAD. P3D, and then you just slide that into place. You make sure that you have full contact there, and now this can pass data. There's also a place where you can actually tighten that down here so that it's not going to go anywhere once it is in place. So that's one way that we can pass the information into the camera when we're using this. And it's no different, again, from when you're using their single channel receiver and you're using this MI shoe. But you do need to make sure that you have the correct SMAD unit. Okay, so that's that. Now what happens in situations where you are using a camera system that doesn't have that MI shoe? Let's go ahead and talk about that. All right, so what we've done is we've taken that SMAD P3D off of the dual channel receiver now, and we've replaced it with the standard cold shoe attachment accessory. And that will just go onto any camera system that receives that, as you can see here. And this particular camera is just a small ENG style camera, and it has XLR inputs. So with the system, you do get the appropriate cabling so that you can get those outputs from the receiver into your camera system. And all you're going to do is just attach those here to output one and to output two. And I'm just going to turn this around here and I'm going to take that and I'm going to put it into input one of the camera system. And then of course, take output two and I'm going to put that into input two of the camera system. So now we're using this system in a more traditional situation. Of course, we're not using that MI shoe attachment, but we're still getting that audio out with industry standard connectors, and that goes right into the camera system. And we also have a headphone jack here. So if you are using a smaller camera system that does not have that on it, you can still monitor your audio. It's not the ideal situation because of course you wanna be monitoring what's coming into the camera, but it'll give you the ability to monitor the audio that's coming out of the receiver. So those are the basic connectors on the dual channel receiver. Now what I wanna do is I wanna to talk to you about how we take that receiver and we pair it with our different transmitters that we'd be using in production. 
So just a couple of other things to go over regarding the receiver before we get into syncing up with our transmitters. First of all, in terms of powering, we have just two AA batteries, but you can also put rechargeable batteries in here. And there is a micro USB port on the unit, which can actually power the unit with an external power source or can be used to actually charge rechargeable batteries inside of the receiver. Also, in terms of functionality, you might be used to, if you've used UWPD receivers in the past, having a power button on the receiver. Right now, you'll see that this just says menu. You actually turn on your channels RF1 and RF2 with switches on the top of the unit, and you do not have to use both of them at the same time. You can use this just as you would a standard single channel receiver in production if you'd like but in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and turn both of them on. So most importantly, when you are syncing your transmitters and receivers, you have to make sure that you are not only choosing channels and frequencies that are correct for where you are regionally, and you can refer to Sony's website, and there's additional documentation out there in terms of what those are. So in the US or Europe or in Asia, you would be choosing certain channel ranges and frequency ranges for your products. But you also have to make sure that your transmitters and receivers match each other. I'm using the 14 to 25 channel range, which is in the 470 to 542 frequency range. So now that I know that that's all matched up and that I can scan for and I can actually sync using those channels and those ranges, what we can do is we can go into the menu and actually take a look how we get to all of those things and just take a look at some of the options, though I would say that the purpose of this video is to get you familiarized with this and you'll refer to the user manual for more in-depth coverage on what all of these features are. So firstly, when I just use the minus and the plus buttons on the unit, it's cycling through just standard settings for the unit. So for instance, I had talked about the battery type. I would press set and hold that, and then I would use the plus and minus again to basically tell the unit what types of batteries I'm using in here. I'm using type one. So I'll just go ahead and just press set again. And then you'll see here that when I go to out level, I'm just gonna go ahead and press the set button again until it blinks, and then I can change the out level from the receiver based on decibels. I'm just gonna leave that at zero dB and set that. And then we have our menu button. And it very simply just cycles through all of the different inputs that we have here, RF1, RF2, and the mic input. So I'm just gonna go ahead and we can take a look at that. I'll press menu once. I am in RF1 and I'll press the minus button to see all of my different options there. In fact, right here, this is where we would actually say what types of transmitters we're using. So I'll just hold down the set button, it'll blink. We are currently using UWPD, which is correct, but let's say you were using the WL800 series, then you could go ahead and use that to use this receiver with those transmitters. So again, press set, gonna go back here to UWPD and set that. So that should give you a pretty good idea of how we actually use the menu system. So now again, by pressing menu the second time, we go to that RF2 and we press it again and then we have our external in options. So you'll see here for the external in, we can actually assign where that's going to. So if I hold down the set button, it starts to blink. By default, it's going out to one and two. So that'll actually be mixing to one and two. I'll just leave that on out one and two for now. So just press the set button. So now we're gonna go back to one and take a look at our different options again inside of there. And as we saw earlier on, there are a lot of choices in terms of assigning, scanning, choosing what types of transmitters you're using, syncing, and these are all things that you can do with the system. You can also choose which band you're using in terms of your channels. But for me, really the magic here, especially in small to no crew production, is to make this process easy. So we're gonna use this first option in here called auto set, because again, I can manually put in 
what my channel is going to be. I can manually put in what my frequency is going to be. And then I can go to my individual transmitters and I can match those by just putting those in. But what we really want in most of our production environments is we want devices like this to help us not only sync things together, but to make sure that we're on a channel and a frequency that doesn't have interference. And that's really what AutoSet does. It does a scan for us, and then it allows us to sync with our transmitters. So what we're gonna do first, and I would say that, you know, again, a typical situation for us would be to have two wireless body pack transmitters with people, or we might have one wireless body pack transmitter, and then we would use something like this, which is a plug-on transmitter, and we could have a wireless reporter mic, or we could have a boomed shotgun-style microphone on a boom pole, but in either of those situations, we just need to make sure that everything syncs up. So we're gonna use and sync up this body pack transmitter first. So what I'm gonna do is go into, again, this auto set, hold down the set button here, and then it'll say yes. And if I press set again, it's going to go ahead and do that. Now, before I do that, and this is something that you'll forget to do sometimes, you have to make sure that your transmitter is on. So I'm turning my transmitter on here and what you need to also make sure of is that you have these infrared components on both the transmitter and the receiver. So I've got the dual channel receiver on the left hand side and then I have my actual transmitter on the right. So here I am, I'm just gonna go ahead and press that again. I'm gonna say yes and it is scanning for a particular channel that is open, it is going to choose a frequency as well. As soon as it has found that and we can see that here there it is, you'll see that it'll light up here on here and it'll say sync, yes or no, I'll say yes. There we go. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and press the set button on here. And so you can see here now that we have a match between our transmitter and our receiver. So now we're gonna go through the same process here and we're gonna do that with the plug-on transmitter. So I'm just gonna turn that unit on and what we're gonna do here is we're now gonna cycle through. We're gonna cycle down to our auto set. So I'm gonna press the set button until we see that yes blinking, press it again, and it is now going through there. It's asking me to sync, and you'll see that it'll say yes, no. So I'll say yes, I'll press set, and you'll see that we now have a match in terms of our channel and also our frequency. So there you have it. There's the dual channel receiver from Sony in the UWPD series. It's a product that I can see myself using a lot in my corporate and documentary work and is an ideal fit for small to no crew production. I can use two body pack transmitters. I can use a body pack transmitter and a plug-on transmitter. Hope you learned something in this video. Thanks for watching.